Okay, I'll get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first heat pump for your Home 101 series. My name is Lisa Trong, and I am the Energy Programs Manager at Reap Green Solutions. With homes contributing 18% of greenhouse gas emissions in Waterloo Region, homeowners can fight climate change and improve their comfort of their homes with heat pumps for space and water heating. This evening, we'll explore what heat pumps water heaters are, how they work, and lived experience, as well as have the opportunity to interact with one another and ask questions to technical experts, energy and water advisors, and experienced users. Just some housekeeping rules. Uh, please remain muted. Please keep your camera off to save on bandwidth. Feel free to ask questions in the chat or save your questions for the breakout room. And last, a recorded version of this webinar will be available and the breakout room will not be recorded. Um, now I'll pass it over to Climate Action WR Plan Manager, Samantha Tremel. Thank you. Hi, Lisa. <clears throat> Hi, everyone, and thank you, Lisa. There we go. I'm Samantha Tremel. I'm the plan manager with Climate Action Waterloo Region. Climate Action Waterloo Region is a collaboration between local organizations, community members, and the municipalities within the region. And we're focused on climate change mitigation, so reducing greenhouse gases at their source. We are co-led by both Reap Green Solutions and Sustainable Waterloo Region. And we are funded by the region of Waterloo and the cities of Cambridge, Kitchener, and Waterloo. Our role is to coordinate the activities related to our community level climate action plans and strategies, measure progress and engage the water community in climate action initiatives, such as this event that we're doing tonight. We are really fortunate to have a tremendous, tremendous team of volunteers through our sector committees. These are teams of volunteers who take on projects and initiatives related to the three highest emitting sectors in our community's greenhouse gas inventory. And those are transportation, workplaces, and homes, residential. And this webinar has been curated and presented by our residential sector committee. So we thank them for all their time and dedication to this work and in putting on this great event for us all here today. Next slide, please, Lisa. So our intention in this workshop is to share sustainability best practices to protect and promote stewardship of the land by sharing an introduction to what heat pump water heaters are, how they work, and share lived experiences with the technology. I myself am a settler on this land. Through the Dish with One Spoon Treaty, settlers and Indigenous people alike have a responsibility to safeguard the land and the water that we live on. And our intention with this workshop tonight is to share knowledge of sustainability best practices, largely from a settler perspective, to help others learn to be environmental stewards and fulfill our treaty responsibilities. So we hope to continue to learn how to integrate Indigenous traditional knowledge and other knowledge systems into our education and actions. And we'd be grateful to hear from you during or after this workshop if you wish to share your knowledge as well. Land acknowledgement is only one small part of supporting Indigenous communities, and we hope our land acknowledgement statement will inspire others to stand with us in solidarity with Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge that Waterloo Region is located on the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples, including Haudenosaunee, we recognize the enduring presence of the Indigenous people that we share this land with today and their contributions to our community. We value their traditional knowledge about how to live sustainably on this land we share and will leave for future generations. And Climate Action Water the Region is committed to the necessary learning, relationship building, and actions to work towards reconciliation. Next slide, please, Lisa. In June of this past year, all eight municipalities in Waterloo Region endorsed Transform WR. That's Waterloo Region's transition to an equitable, prosperous, resilient, low carbon community. This is our community's long-term strategy to achieve an 80% greenhouse gas reduction by the year 2050. Next slide. So human generated emissions can come from many different sources. However, most of our emissions come from energy use. 
So we burn fossil fuels to power cars and equipment and to heat and cool our homes and heat our water. Locally in Waterloo Region, 94% of our emissions in 2015, that was the last time we did an inventory, were produced by energy consumption and combustion in three sectors, transportation, workplaces, and homes. And within these sectors, there were six primary energy sources that contribute to greenhouse gases, with natural gas being the second highest at 36% of that amount. So as a result, addressing our local emissions is primarily about changing our energy use and the systems that supply that energy. And can you click? So in relation to how we heat and cool our buildings, the Transform WR strategy outlines two primary goals that relate to tonight's workshop. So by 2030, 20% of all buildings in Waterloo Region will need to use electric heat pumps for heating and water heating instead of natural gas or equipment that is as energy and GHG efficient. And 85% of buildings will use electric heat pumps for heating and water heating by the year 2050, if we're to reach our local community greenhouse gas reduction goals. So some ambitious but achievable goals here. And with that, I will turn it back over to Lisa to segue into tonight's topic. Thank you, Samantha. Now I would like to introduce tonight's guest speaker, Joseph Tennell. Joseph has been working in the energy efficiency sector since graduating from Seneca in 2013. He has worked on many projects in Ontario, such as Evolve Net Zero Building in Waterloo and many others within the GTA. He incorporates energy efficiency into his life wherever possible and tries to educate others to do the same to better the environment. Um, the picture on the right is his very own heat pump hot water heater. It was installed in 2019, and today he'll be discussing some of the benefits, consideration, and even his own personal experience with one. So let's give a warm virtual welcome to Joseph. So hi, Joseph. Thank you for being here. Hello, Lisa, and hello, everyone. I'm going to begin with sharing my screen here. Just a moment. There we go, hopefully you can all see that. Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you so much for Climate Action for organizing this webinar. Um, I think you covered all the points there in the introduction. We're gonna go over what heat pumps are, what heat pump water heaters are, their benefits, considerations, and it's gonna be a lot of great topics tonight. There's only one technical slide that we'll have to get through, um, but I think we'll make it through that. So we'll dive right into it. Um, the reason we're talking about heat pump hot water heaters today, um, as Samantha mentioned, they fit directly into the Transform Waterloo plan for meeting our goal of 80% reduction in GHG emissions by 2050. And our GHG emission targets are not only beneficial for the region, but for the world. And we need to take every action possible to achieve this goal. Heat pump hot water heaters are one action that we will be taking, uh, but there's many more that can also be done to further reduce our region's GHG emissions. The reason we're talking about hot water heaters is because they do play a large role in our GHG reduction plan. Uh, presently, because hot water heating in a typical residential home accounts for about 20% of a home's typical energy usage. And this is quite high, seeing in this graph here that the only other thing um, higher than hot water heating is space heating. This is because most hot water heaters um, use a tank style natural gas or electric resistive heating system, which is very energy intensive. Um, and on the slide here, you can see three typical images of hot water heaters that you may be familiar with. Uh, the first one's a natural gas atmospheric, about 80% efficient natural gas unit. This was actually the unit that was previously in my basement that's been replaced. Uh, there's also an image of a natural gas condensing hot water heater, which many people probably have in their basements, and a typical electric resistive hot water heater, which is also very common. Uh, but again, each of these units is very energy intensive. Um, as mentioned already by Samantha, in order to reduce the amount of energy and GHG emissions from each home uh, specific to hot water heating, the transform plan uh, requires a heat pump hot water heaters account for about 20% of residential hot water heaters in just nine years by 2030 and 85% by 2050 within the Waterloo region. Uh, even though hot, uh, heat pump water heaters are not a new technology, the ability for us to shift from our very comfortable ways of thinking and using these standard hot water heaters is gonna be quite difficult. 
Um, two other important reasons why heat pump hot water heaters are part of this plan and why they're important. Uh, one of them is that it consumes electricity, which as we all know, can be sourced from renewable means. Uh, this is just a photo of my neighbor's house actually. He just installed solar panels and he'll also be getting a heat pump hot water heater, which will essentially be powered by the solar energy generated uh, with his array there. And heat pump hot water heaters are also very important for our plan because they use the electricity very efficiently. Uh, they are nowhere near as energy intensive as a typical electric hot water heater or natural gas hot water heater. As shown in this graph here, a heat pump water heater typically operates around 350% efficiency, uh, which you know is great when compared to electricity and natural gas hot water heaters, which don't even come close. So before we get into heat pump water heaters, we'll briefly discuss what is a heat pump. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Heat pumps utilize what's called the mechanical refrigeration cycle to move energy in the form of heat uh, from one place to another. And just to let you know, heat pumps are not new. We've been using heat pumps for a long time. Uh, the first heat pump was built in 1857 in Geneva. And since then, we've never stopped using them from refrigerators to air conditioners, all the way to the International Space Station. Heat pumps are used everywhere. Um, some examples of heat pumps that we probably all use or have used at one time are fridges, freezers, home air conditioners if you have one, and your car air conditioner. All of these systems use the mechanical refrigeration cycle to move heat from one place to another. Uh, fridges and freezers, they move heat from inside your fridge to outside your fridge, keep your food cold. Uh, your home AC moves heat from inside your home to outside in order to keep you cool. Um, and there's just a couple images up here. Typical home AC system on the right-hand side, that's mine. Uh, typical image of a fridge there with a cold section and a hot section. And I name it probably one of the first heat pumps used, probably steam powered. Luckily, they've significantly been reduced in size since 1857. But how do they work? This will be one of the technical slides that we have here. Um, so just bear with me if it's uh, you know too much for some people, but sometimes when we think about how a heat pump can make one space cooler and one space hotter by using just a little bit of electricity and some refrigerant, you might think it's magic, but it can actually be explained with something way better than magic, thermodynamics. <laughs> uh, we won't get too far into the details, but as a brief explanation, we can say that a heat pump uses refrigerant to absorb heat in one location and then move it to another where it's released. Uh, refrigerant is able to absorb heat when it's put under low pressure and becomes cold, much colder than its surroundings. And refrigerant is able to release heat when it's put under high pressure and becomes hot, much hotter than its surroundings. So with this brief explanation, we can kind of picture how a fridge works. Um, inside your fridge, there's a copper coil with, with a low pressure refrigerant, which is cold much colder than the air around it. Um, this causes it to absorb heat from within the fridge, making the inside of the fridge cold. The heat pump system then moves the refrigerant through a compressor and to a coil on the outside of the fridge, where it's under high pressure and becomes very hot, much hotter than the air around it in your kitchen. This causes it to release the heat that it had absorbed from inside the fridge. Um, and it releases it actually to your kitchen space. Uh, your home AC works in the exact same way. Um, and the image here on the screen, it shows that heat pumps have a hot side and a cold side. You can even feel a heat pump working. You can find the hot and cold side of your fridge. Inside of the fridge is the cold side where heat's being absorbed into the refrigerant. And somewhere at the back outside of the fridge is the hot side where the heat's being released. And this whole operation is what I've kind of been trying to describe where the mechanical refrigeration cycle can take heat from one place and move it to another. But for now, we'll stop describing how a heat pump works. But if anyone wants to learn more about it or understand in more detail the latent and sensible heat transfers that take place, uh, there's a lot of information online, um, especially with YouTube. You can find more as well through REAP, Climate Action Waterloo, uh, lots of resources online. But now for the fun part, you might be asking, how are we ever going to get to hot water heaters if we keep talking about fridges and air conditioners? Well, if you remember the image previously, each heat pump uh, example that I gave uh, has a, well, like a fridge or an air conditioner 
they've been used for cooling purposes, right? Each of them also has a hot side. There's one side that's hot, and there's one side that's cold. There's a place where heat is being absorbed and heat's being released. Um, in the case of a fridge or an air conditioner, it's being released outside in order to provide cooling. In the case of a heat pump water heater, instead of using the cold side of a heat pump system, we're actually just using the hot side and we're using it to heat up water. Essentially, a heat pump water heater has a tiny air conditioner at the top and it moves heat from air within the room where it's located and transfers it to the water storage tank, providing domestic hot water. Uh, a common way of describing how a heat pump hot water heater works is to say, think of a refrigerator, but working backwards. A refrigerator normally removes heat from an enclosed box and releases it to the surrounding air. Whereas a heat pump water heater, it actually takes heat from the surrounding air and transfers it to an enclosed box or tank and in this case, it's full of water. A heat pump water heater is far more energy efficient than a traditional gas or electric hot water heater because it does not produce heat. And let me clarify that, it does make hot water. <laughs> but what I mean is that it does not convert a fuel source such as natural gas or electricity into heat, into thermal energy. Instead, it's using electricity to move heat using refrigerant as the medium. And for each unit of energy put into the heat pump system, it's able to move many times more than that, resulting in an operating efficiency far above 100%, as mentioned, often upwards of 300%. Um, again, this might sound like new technology because we haven't really heard about it in our everyday lives, uh, but heat pump water heaters have been in use for many years now in North America and even longer in Europe. Just about every major manufacturer now does provide a heat pump water heater option. Uh, these modern heat pump wa hot water heaters, they're capable of generating all the hot water needs of a typical residential home and much more efficiently than conventional water heaters. On the slide in front of you, I have some examples of heat pump hot water heaters offered by different manufacturers. The one on the left is from A.O. Smith. Uh, the one in the middle with the red kind of top, uh, I think that's from GE Electric. And the one beside that is from Ream. And actually there's an image of the Ream heat pump hot water heater I have in my basement, which was also shown on the first slide. So further proof that I actually did uh, put one in here and I'm not uh, <laughs> just talking about it. But again, lots of options available from different manufacturers. Uh, they are available on the market today, all here within Canada which is great and within the Waterloo region. So we'll go over some of the benefits of heat pump hot water heaters. Uh, as mentioned, very energy efficient. Um, most heat pump water heaters can achieve a COP rating of around three, which is more commonly understood as 300% efficient. Uh, especially when compared to other types of hot water heaters, heat pump water heaters really stand out. And you might be looking at the graph there saying that electric hot water heaters, sometimes they have a nameplate efficiency of 100% and condensing natural gas somewhere in the 90s. Um, but when you take into account things like standby loss, so the heat loss through the hot water heater um, as the hot water is in the tank and it's losing heat to the air around it, uh, the efficiency of those units actually decreases. Um, but even taking into consideration, let's say standby losses, heat pump water heaters can still achieve 350% operating efficiency, which is a real uh, benefit about them. As mentioned again, they only consume electricity and they consume very little electricity uh, when compared to other hot water heaters. So you might be saying, why not get an electric resistive hot water heater? It consumes electricity and the electricity can be sourced from renewable means. Uh, heat pump hot water heaters use a lot less. They have a much smaller demand. Um, you know, when my heat pump hot water heater is running, it's only consuming about 300 watts. Whereas an electric resistive hot water heater, when it's running, it's at about 3.5 to 4.5 kilowatts, which is a lot. Um, and this is great, not only for the environment, but also for your wallet and for your household, uh, because you are future-proofing yourself for the electrified way of living that is uh, coming for us. <laughs> 
another benefit associated with heat pump water, hot water heaters, uh, there's no combustion gases. So these days, condensing hot water heaters, the natural gas ones, they are very energy efficient. Um, and they typically only exhaust a white cloud that we might see at the side of a house when it's really cold out. Uh, but we shouldn't forget that this is still the exhaust from a combustion process. The white cloud that we see, and we sometimes associate with fall or winter time, uh, it contains water vapor and carbon dioxide. And if the combustion process does not take place correctly, it can also contain harmful gases such as carbon monoxide. Uh, most often you need to have a carbon monoxide detector in the basement uh, located near the a natural gas hot water heater just in case there's something were to happen. So the benefits of a heat pump hot water heater, which is the same as an electric water heater in this case, is that there's no combustion gases whatsoever. Uh, sometimes this is a much bigger benefit, especially in let's say a house where the venting of a natural gas hot water heater is difficult due to the location. Um, and so in the images here, you can see someone's house with a domestic hot water heater um, having its exhaust through the roof. And actually that's the venting of my old unit, which I was able to completely get rid of once I installed uh, my heat pump hot water heater. Another benefit is the various storage tank sizes. So just like any other type of hot water heater on the market, you can buy a heat pump hot water heater in many different tank sizes. Um, you don't have to compromise. They don't come in just small and they don't come in just large. Um, the image shown uh, at the top there, the table, is actually just the different sizes in storage capacity that was available for the remodel that I was looking at, uh, 50, 65, and 80 gallons. So really, if you're thinking about getting a heat pump hot water heater, you can look at how many gallons you have now, and you'll be able to find a heat pump hot water heater in the same size uh, without any issue. Um, and the other table down there talks about the size of the actual unit. You might think that a heat pump water heater, because it has a, some extra components in it, that it might be larger, might not fit in the space. Um, but actually, I compared three options from Ream, the electric, the natural gas, and the heat pump hot water heater option, all 50 gallons. And the sizes are very comparable. You know, the heat pump water heater is one inch taller, um, but hopefully people can spare that extra one inch in their basements or wherever their, heat, their hot water heater is located. This is just a good benefit because, you know, with a heat pump hot water heater, you can continue to have a storage tank, which a lot of people like to have. Sometimes there's a bit of, bit of hesitancy with going with an instantaneous hot water heater, uh, but with the heat pump hot water heater model, you can keep a storage tank, lots of capacity, lots of hot water ready on demand. One of the other benefits of heat pump hot water heaters is that they are a hybrid. And this is probably the best part about heat pump water heaters. Most models are actually a hybrid unit. This means that it has a heat pump system, as I've described above, and it's able to provide all the hot water needs of the home. But it also has electric resistive heaters in it, the same as an electric resistive hot water heater. So in reality, when you buy a heat pump water heater, you're actually buying two systems built into one. Uh, heat pump water heaters typically have this hybrid setup due to what's called the low recovery time associated with heat pump mode operations. Uh, this essentially means that when the heat pump system is operating, it can't produce hot water as quickly as let's say a electric resistive heater or a natural gas hot water heater could. It can still produce a hot water, um, but if you ever get into an instance where you have an 80 gallon tank and someone uses all 80 gallons for a very, very long shower and they still need more hot water, which is a pretty rare scenario, uh, the heat pump system would be able to make hot water, but it, it might have a tough time um, you know, bringing the entire tank back up the temperature. In this scenario, the electric heaters would kick on and would be able to produce all the hot water or reheat the entire tank up very quickly. Again, this is not the uh, typical operation of the heat pump hot water heater. Usually it would only use the heat pump system, but the electric mode can always be used as a backup, which is really great. Um, some people might hear this and they might think of it as a limitation rather than a benefit, but I really consider it to be a benefit because the heat pump system will be able to provide the majority of your heating needs. And in the event that there's a huge demand, you'll have the electric heaters as an automatic backup. 
So it's really the best of both worlds. Um, and because you have these two different systems, you're actually able to um, configure your hot water heater as you wish. So there's a couple modes shown on this slide here uh, that I can change my hot water heater to. So there's energy saver mode, where it'll mostly use the heat pump system and a little bit of electric heat. There's heat pump only mode, where it'll only use the heat pump system and not the electric heaters, which is actually what I have mine set up to. Uh, there's high demand mode, where it may use both systems at once. And if for whatever reason you wanna stop using the heat pump system, I don't know why, but if you want to, you can go to just electric mode. So maybe down the road, you know, 15 years, the heat pump system needs a part replaced. It's gonna take two days to come. You could change it to electric mode and you'll still have hot water. And there's even a vacation mode, uh, whether you're going on vacation or whether the hot water heater is gonna take a break for 28 days. <laughs> That's about it for the um, hybrid system that we'll talk about for now. Well insulated. Because heat pump hot water heaters are designed for maximum efficiency, they're built uh, with a lot of insulation right from the factory. So another image is popped up here, and it's actually a typical 80% efficient natural gas hot water heater, probably one that was kind of the same age as mine. Um, and it's been cut open, so you can see the inside and also what's in between the walls. You can see in some places the yellow foam, which is the insulation, it's pretty thin. In some areas, it looks like just about an inch. Um, this is why you may have seen hot water heater insulation blankets at Home Depot or Lowe's or the hardware stores, uh, which you can install yourself to help save energy by insulating the entire hot water heater and reducing what's called the standby loss. But the good thing about heat pump hot water heaters are typically they're so well insulated that the manual that it comes with actually tells you not to bother with further insulation. This is the case of my REAM unit. It mentioned that the unit comes with two inches of non-CFC foam insulation and that no additional blankets or uh, insulating blankets are required. Uh, it would add no benefit to the unit. So again, it just goes to show how the units are designed for maximum efficiency. There's no need for you to do other measures afterwards by further insulating, uh, which is really great. Of course, insulating your pipes is always advised. You can still save lots of energy by, uh, by doing that. Uh, app compatibility, so just another benefit. Obviously, everything today can be connected to an app. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in being able to control your hot water heater from your phone while you're on vacation, then you can. Um, the Ream unit comes with a, uh, you know, a phone app, and most other heat pump hot water heaters also come with a phone app, just because everything does these days. Um, you know, my particular app allows me to see what it's doing, change the set point. Uh, I can even tell it to not to lower the temperature at nighttime maybe. Um, but probably one of the best features is that I can see all the energy usage uh, that it's consuming and it tracks it per day and uh, per month and per year, which is really great. Another benefit is that a heat pump or water heater will provide mild dehumidification for the area that it's located. So as with all heat pumps, there are two sides, a hot side and a cold side. When the cold side is exposed to humid air, it causes condensation to form. Most of us actually, you've seen this probably happening. If you have a home AC system, you'll see condensate forming uh, from your furnace cooling coil. And you'll probably have a drain hose or a small pump that moves the condensate away from the furnace unit and towards a drain. So because a heat pump water heater has a cold side and because the space where it's located typically in the basement or in a laundry room, which could become pretty humid, condensation may form on the cold coil. And this needs to be directed towards a drain. Now, again, some people may say that this is a downside to a heat pump water heater, but we already have to deal with condensate from a number of appliances. Uh, if you have a natural gas condensing hot water heater, you'll have some condensate or water vapor accumulating in the exhaust. If you have a home AC system or a dehumidifier, you'll already be dealing with condensates. I like to look at this as a positive aspect of heat pump water heaters, because when my heat pump hot water heater operates and when the basement where it's located is humid, which is actually most of the summer, I get a little bit of dehumidification for free, which is really great. Uh, of course, if you have a really you know, muggy basement, this is not gonna replace your entire dehumidifier. <laughs> this will just help a little bit. 
But speaking on this topic, your basement will not turn into a fridge, which uh, sometimes people may think when they hear that it can provide dehumidification and that it has a tiny air conditioner on top. So even though the heat pump water heater is moving heat from the surrounding air to the water tank, your basement won't get that cold. It won't turn into a fridge, which some of you may be disappointed to hear if you were planning on converting your basement into a cold meat room. But in fact, I monitor the temperature of my basement and I don't notice it being any cooler than usual. This is due to the fact that just like your fridge, a heat pump water heater will not operate all the time. It only operates when it needs to. Um, and unlike a fridge, it is very well insulated. And we don't open it, you know, 35 times a day to see if we still have milk. Uh, you know, the water heater is usually kept closed. <laughs> and one of the final benefits that I wanted to talk about was warranty. Just like any other major appliance, heat pump water heaters will have a warranty if they come from a reputable manufacturer. Uh, my unit from Rheem comes with a 10 year warranty which was really nice to see because I expect it to last much longer than that. And I wanted to bring up these images on the slide here because I think the manufacturer expects so too. Uh, they only offer a six year warranty on their electric resistive and natural gas hot water heaters. So when you do invest in a heat pump water heater, you can certainly expect it to last for quite some time. The next slide here is considerations. Now, just as there are considerations when buying any appliance, even when you're getting an electric hot water heater or natural gas hot water heater, there are some considerations specific to heat pump hot water heaters. Uh, noise. Most of them have an operating noise level of about 49 decibels, which is about the same as a refrigerator. Uh, in fact, looking at the image on the slide here of typical um, noise emitted from household appliances and systems, at 49 decibels, a heat pump water heater would, prob would probably be one of the quietest appliances in your house. And typically because it's located in the basement or a laundry room, the noise that it does generate is not usually an issue. Um, but it is something to consider if perhaps it's located in a room right next to the living room uh, or in a closet upstairs. Personally, I never know when mine is running uh, unless I'm in the basement with it. And funny enough, I could actually to tell when my old natural gas hot water heater was running because it was vented through the chensel chimney and it carried a little bit of the noise. So with mine, I got quieter, not louder. As space requirements. All water heaters, whether they're electric or natural gas, have space requirements and heat pump water heaters are no exception. However, there are a few more considerations. When the heat pump water heater operates, it uses a a small fan on top of the unit to move air um, over the cold section in order to absorb heat. Manufacturers require a certain amount of room space to ensure that there's enough air circulation when the unit's operating. So for example, most manufacturers require about a thousand cubic feet um, of air space. So that's where you can locate the, room, uh, the, heat, the water heater within a room that's about a thousand cubic feet. Uh, my unit from Rheem actually only required 700 cubic feet. Um, but just to give you some perspective, a thousand cubic feet is a room that is about 12 feet long by 12 feet wide by seven foot tall or any other combination. Now, this typically isn't a problem when locating the unit in a basement. Um, but if it, it is an issue, if the room is too small and doesn't meet these requirements, you could still have a heat pump water heater. There are still options for achieving the space requirements. Uh, the first one could be installing vents on the doors. As shown in the image in the top right, uh, there's a door with some vents on it, you know, some slots to allow airflow, and this increases the overall space where it can uh, essentially get air circulation from. Uh, the other option on most units is that you can actually duct the uh, vents of the hot water heater to another room, potentially, where it might intake and exhaust air um, if needed. This is a bit more of an extreme situation but may be required um, in certain situations. Of course, typically not an issue if you have a, a basement area or a furnace room um, that has sufficient space, but definitely something to be aware of. Speaking of space requirements, there's also an operating space temperature requirement. Um, heat pump water heaters must be kept within a certain temperature range in order for them to operate in heat pump mode. They can operate in electric resistive mode in any temperature. But in order for the heat pump system to operate, 
most hot water heaters need to be within four Celsius and 62 Celsius. Um, but some of them are different. My REAM units can go as low as uh, three Celsius as per the manufacturer's instructions. Now you might be asking, why is this a consideration? Um, because you know your house never gets to four Celsius or 62 Celsius. Well, in some parts of the world, heat pump water heaters are kept in garages or even outside. Uh, but in the Waterloo region, and to be frank, in all of Canada, we tend to keep our water heaters inside and the spaces usually don't get to those extreme temperatures. However, if you were considering uh, locating the heat pump hot water heater, let's say in a crawl space that gets frost in the winter, then you'd have an issue. Um, frost indicating temperatures below zero. So that would not be ideal. Another consideration, which I've already mentioned, is condensate removal. Uh, condensate is formed when the heat pump operates in a room where there is humidity within the air. And the means of condensate removal is the same as with any condensing hot water heater, uh, furnace, or home AC. You can have a drain line or a drain pump that directs the water towards a drain. Um, even if you don't have a, a drain nearby, the pump system will usually get by as it can move condensate quite a far distance. Luckily, my hot water heater is located next to a sink, so I simply extended a tube over to the sink and it drains in there. Uh, but there's also an image of a typical condensate pump on the slide there, and that's actually used in my furnace because my furnace is just uh, too far away from a drain. So there are options available. Another consideration very specific to heat pump water heaters is filter cleaning. So as mentioned, a heat pump water heater passes air over an evaporator coil, um, in a, and in order to protect the coil from getting dirty, there is a filter. This is the same reason why your home furnace has a filter, it's to clean the air and also protect the uh, furnace and the cooling coil. In the case of heat pump water heaters, the filters are reusable and they can very easily be cleaned uh, by you know, running some water over them. So there's no extra cost associated with filter cleaning. You don't have to buy a special filter every couple months. Uh, it's just one extra task to do in the general house maintenance. But if you do include it you know, with your routine furnace filter uh, replacement, then there's no chance of missing it. Here's an image of mine. On the left, you can see the hot water heater with the filter in the unit. And on the right, you can see I've slid it, I've slid it up and out of the unit. Usually I take it over to the sink, rinse it with some water, let it dry and put it back. Uh, it might look dirty in the image, but it is clean. <laughs> Another consideration are the electrical needs. Heat pump water heaters, as mentioned, they have a electric resistive uh, element for backup operations. And this typically requires an electrical connection similar to that of an electric hot water heater. Uh, if anyone has an electric hot water heater, they'll know that it most likely requires 240 volts at 30 amps. Um, there are heat pump water heater options available that are 120 volts at 15 amps, um, you know, if needed. But if you don't already have this connection in place, for example, if you have a natural gas hot water heater, just like I did, you'll most likely have a 120, 15 amp connection to your hot water heater, then it is still possible to install a heat pump water heater. You just have to run a new electrical supply from the breaker. Um, one that I had to have installed required, uh, you know, two poles rather than one pole. And most houses can accommodate this addition to the panel, um, but you would have to worry if your panel has glass fuses or if you're at 60 amps, um, or if you have 100 amp and all the breaker slots are already full, then you may require some additional upgrades related to the panel. Uh, but if you have a panel kind of like mine, 100 amps, lots of open space, you should be able to have someone install a new electrical connection for you without a lot of hassle. However, it is important to talk about the installation process. Uh, this is because most people, they don't plan to replace their hot water heaters. Most people wait till they fail. They call an HVAC company, the company comes in, and you know probably the next day they can replace the hot water heater with the same type that they had before, uh, or whichever uh, type they have most common maybe in their warehouse. Typically, this means that a natural gas hot water heater replaces a natural gas water heater and electric replaces electric. Um, one of the considerations with heat pump water heaters is that if your hot water heater fails, it may not be possible to install a heat pump water heater the very next day. Uh, this may be because you have to run a new electrical connection. 
maybe the HVAC contractor you hired uh, doesn't have one in their warehouse, you know, in the Waterloo region. Mine actually had to come from, uh, I think it was Windsor or something in their warehouse. So it took a few days to get delivered. Um, so that, and maybe also the space requirements. Maybe you can put in a heat pump water heater, but you have to install vents on the furnace room door. There may be a few things to consider. Um, and when your hot water heater fails, no one really wants to wait too long. So this is why we should be proactive and we should schedule for the replacement of our hot water heaters. Um, if your hot water heater is 10 years or older, I'd recommend planning to replace it before it fails. This way you can have a hassle-free and rush-free installation of a new heat pump system. Uh, just as mentioned, when I installed mine, uh, I had to run a new power supply and the unit took a while to get delivered. Luckily, my existing unit was still running, so I could take my time and I wasn't rushed at all. Further into the installation, you want to make sure that the installer has experience with installing and not just selling these products. Be sure to ask them questions, do some of your own research, and make sure they know what they're talking about. Um, there are a lot of companies out there, though, that have quickly adopted these products and they don't need to be scrutinized as much. Uh, REAP does have a list of local contractors with experience regarding heat pumps and energy systems, uh, which can be found here, but it's also going to be shared on the later screen, so don't worry about copying it down now. Um, of course, most reputable HVAC companies should be able to install the unit. Uh, it doesn't require too much of a, a special consideration for installation. I ended up getting three quotes from three different companies. Um, two of them weren't on the list here, and they were all comfortable with the installation process. So. Just like any other appliance, there are considerations specific to the appliance, but they aren't considerations to be feared, just to be aware of, uh, as they can all be overcome if needed. And that'll conclude the heat pump hot water heater considerations portion. Next, we're gonna talk about some dollars and cents. Uh, this graphic has been put together to provide a bit of a comparison of the average operating costs and annualized costs of various different hot water heating systems um, over their lifespan. So as you can see, oil, propane, and electric resistive, they have the highest operating cost and the highest annualized cost over the lifespan. Natural gas and heat pump water heaters have the lowest annual operating cost and annualized cost. Uh, natural gas, the operating cost per year is about $98. And for a heat pump hot water heater, uh, it's about $89. And this is using standard electricity rates, um, not assuming always off peak. So it is worth noting that the heat pump water heater, lower operating cost per year and longer expected lifespan. Um, unfortunately, the cost associated with each installation, uh, we couldn't put up here because it really depends on the installer, the make that you choose, the model that you choose and your current home setup. Um, but from this graph, you can really see that if you have an oil, a propane, or an electric resistive system, switching to a heat pump hot water heater is really a no-brainer as you can save a lot of money per year. Natural gas and heat pump hot water heaters, they're pretty comparable in this scenario, but there is something else to consider uh, where the difference is quite large. And that's shown on this graph here in terms of emissions. So as you can see in this graph, Heat pump water heaters produce 91% less GHG emissions than condensing natural gas hot water heaters and 76% less than electric resistive hot water heaters. This is a huge amount of GHG emissions reductions. Um, when people say they have a natural gas condensing system that is super efficient or a low emitting electric resistive system, uh, they really haven't seen these graphs yet. Um, again, this is made possible by the fact that heat pump hot water heaters, they use less energy than natural gas and electric hot water heaters. And the energy that they do use uh, is quite clean, is electricity. And in Ontario, the majority of our electricity does come from non-GHG emitting sources, such as uh, nuclear, hydroelectric, wind, solar, and then some natural gas plants. But as our grids move towards 100% renewable, the emissions associated from heat pump water heaters are gonna get even lower. Uh, I'd like to think that we're all here today because we care about, well, the money in our wallets, but also the environment. And hopefully this is a big motivating factor uh, for a lot of people. You can see a natural gas system, even though it's condensing, it's producing about you know, three quarters of a ton of CO2 per year. Whereas a heat pump hot water heater is 0 0.06 tons per year. So it's a really big difference.
and incentives available? The answer is yes. <laughs> Presently, there's a national federal incentive program which actually offers rebates on a multitude of home energy retrofit projects from windows, insulation, uh, thermostats, renewable energy, and even heat pump and water heaters. Uh, the rebates are available after having completed a home energy audit, and the maximum grant available is $1,000. I'll be honest with you, I was disappointed to hear this because I already have one and I can't apply for the grants. I really wish I had this grant available when I was getting mine because it'll make a huge difference on the uh, you know, return on investment and the overall purchase cost. So if anyone's considering it, now's the time. Oops. Um, and other incentives? Well, we're gonna have to see it's all election dependent. The elections happened and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, but if you're interested in getting a heat pump water heater, you should definitely apply for the Greener Homes Program. You should schedule your energy audit. Even if you're not sure about getting a heat pump water heater, you should still register for the Greener Homes Program and schedule an energy audit because it will tell you in great detail where you could save the most amount of energy um, and you know where the best benefit is for your wallet and the environment. And just a hint, when you do register for the Greener Homes Program, you can choose REAP to complete your energy audits. So as we're getting close to the end here, um, we've gone over what heat pumps are, what hot water heat pumps are, their benefits, considerations. And to be honest with you, it's all information that's available on the internet today. But I'd like to at least take the opportunity to tell you from my own personal experience that switching from my old natural gas, my loud, clunky hot water heater to a clean, green, mean heat pump hot water heater has been fantastic. I've had no issues so far. Uh, it makes hot water, which is really nice. They lowered my utility bills. I got rid of my rental fee. That was for my old hot water heater. Lowered my GHG emissions. It's super fun to talk about, and I would highly recommend it. Um, and just another point on the financials, using the built-in app, I'm able to track how much energy it consumes on its own. And while I'm sure this isn't 100% accurate, um, it does probably provide a good estimation of what it does cost to operate a typical heat pump water heater. And right now I'm at about $3 a month on average for the last year. So it's really not a lot. Um, there is a spike there in March, 2020, probably because of the pandemic, everyone's staying at home. Um, so yeah, again, it's a great experience, saves a lot of money, um, really doesn't cost a lot to operate. I'd also like to take the opportunity to let you know that Heather McDermott recently created an online guide for heat pumps uh, in collaboration with a group of local individuals, uh, which I was able to contribute some information towards and where you can read and learn more about heat pump hot water heaters and air source heat pumps. Um, it's a really great resource and I think everyone should uh, take advantage of it. That's pretty much all I had to share today. Thank you so much for everyone for coming out. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you're able to learn a lot and I hope you will consider installing a heat pump water heater in the near future. I'm gonna stop sharing here and pass it back over to you, Lisa. Thank you. One second. Okay, awesome. So thank you, Joseph, very insightful. Now that we're kind of entering into the breakout session. so. For the next 15 minutes, you'll have a chance to select break, break, breakout room to start in, and then you may visit multiple or all of them during this time. Um, the first breakout is to speak with homeowners who own a heat pump water heater